The United States knows not only how to create powerful military equipment, but also to destroy the enemy with just as much force. Today we're going to have a look at the Javelin, how effective it is against Russian tanks, and why this particular weapon has become a symbol of resistance over in Ukraine. The FGM-148 Javelin, also known as AAWSM, is a manned portable anti-tank missile system, or ATGM, which is one of the primary go-to means against both armored vehicles and low-flying, low-speed targets such as helicopters and drones, as well as propeller-driven aircraft on landing strips. This weapon replaced the portable ATGM M47 Dragon, which had been in service with the U.S. Army since 1975. It was used to destroy Soviet T-55, T-62, and T-72 tanks, and had proven itself during the Gulf War as well. The first attempts to create a new ATGM were made back in 1978, when work on the IMAAWS, the Infantry Man Portable Anti-Armor Assault Weapon System project started. However, it was soon decided to abandon the work due to some unjustified expectations, resulting in the project being curtailed. A similar fate also befell the Assault Breaker program from the early 1980s, whose goal was to create the latest anti-tank missile system. Back in 1983, the U.S. Army put forward clear requirements regarding the AAWSM, the Advanced Anti-Tank Weapon System, medium. The survivability of the shooter on the battlefield was the main priority for future weapons. The level of effectiveness and the damaging effect of the shaped charge, sufficient enough to disable the latest Soviet and later Russian tanks. Effective range out to at least 6,500 feet or 2 kilometers during both day and night operations a soft start launch with the expectation of low noise and flame levels, as well as being able to be fired from rooms. The option of utilizing a command launch platform for reconnaissance-related tasks. Two years later, the development of the AAWSM received official approval, and in the summer of 1986, the Proof of Principle, or POP, phase began, under which a $30 million contract was awarded to demonstrate the technical advantages of Javelin. Then, the POP ended in 1988. A year later, Texas Instruments and Martin Marietta, who which had not merged with Lockheed Martin, signed a full-scale development contract, and the weapon received its own code, FGM-148, as well as the honorary title of deputy to the Dragon ATGM. The Javelin didn't receive its branded nickname until 1991. The missile system consists of the following three main components, the command and launch block, the launch tube assembly, and the rocket. The shooter carries the M98A1 Reusable Command and Launch Unit, also known as the CLU, the Command Launch Unit, used for searching and identifying targets. The CLU, weighing 14.1 pounds, includes the following. The body, shock absorbers to protect the shooter's face and eyes during rocket launch, handles, a battery compartment, optical and thermal sights, an eyepiece, a socket for connecting training equipment, and a socket for connection to the rocket. Note that the U.S. Army has already developed an improved version of the CLU Block 1. The latter is 70% smaller and 40% lighter, and the battery life has increased by 50%. It's further equipped with an advanced long-wavelength IR sensor, a high-definition display, a GPS target designator, a laser rangefinder, and an FIM-92 Stinger anti-aircraft missile launcher, which boasts excellent optics for the speedy identification and elimination of small unmanned aerial vehicles. The CLU's power supply compartment is designed to house a battery that provides system operation for anywhere from 30 minutes to 4 hours, depending on temperature conditions. The optical sight is a 4 times magnification spotting scope that does not require power, allowing one to explore the battlefield and search for targets during the day. A thermal sight, or night vision system, NVS, consists of a lens, a thermal detector cooler placed in a Duar vessel, a display, a control panel, and an eyepiece that operates in two modes, WFOV with a wide viewing angle, and 4 times zoom, and NFOV with a narrow field of view and 9 times magnification. The NVS is a thermal imager and acts as the main device for fixing targets regardless of the time of day. It enables the shooter to successfully act on targets even in low visibility conditions such as fog, rain, smoke, and sandstorms. Thanks to the Stirling engine-powered cooling system, the shooter can cool the system to operating temperature in a mere 2.5 to 3.5 minutes. The ATGM operator sees the image from both optical and thermal sites using a single eyepiece. Switching between them is done by turning the mirror of the device. Furthermore, the shooter can track what's happening on the battlefield through an optical sight even if the weapon is turned off. 
The control panel contains two connectors, one for connecting the training system and one for connecting to the rocket located in the transport and launch container. The eyepiece is protected by a sleeve in order to eliminate the risk of glare from external light sources, and its lenses allow the shooter to quickly adjust the system to certain diopters. Certain indicators located on the screen work to display the current view mode attacks, the status of the thermal sight filter, as well as warn of overheating and possible damage to the ATGM. The Javelin system ammunition consists not only of the missile, but also the transport and launch container, or TLC, in which it is located, as well as the power supply and cooling unit of the missile, also located inside the TLC. Their total weight is an impressive 35.2 pounds, and the guaranteed shelf life of the projectile is set at 10 years. The missile itself consists of the following several sections. Guidance section. Mid-body section. Warhead. Motor propulsion section. Control actuator section. In the middle of the rocket is the Electronic Safe Arm and Fire Unit, or ESAF, which is a fuse that prevents sudden detonation of the warhead and also controls its engines. It protects the fighter from having a detonation go off in the transport and launch container in the event of a misfire and the start of the engines. It also explodes the warhead's two charges in the correct order when it strikes its target. The compartment also contains six missile stabilizing wings, which deploy immediately after it leaves the TPC. The warhead, or its tandem accumulative, consists of two charges. The first one initializes a sort of dynamic protection, clearing the way for the main or second charge. If the missile's target does not have ERA, the first charge acts on the armor, increasing the overall effectiveness of the main charge. With a seamless combination of the thermal image target tracking and control, the Javelin is a perfect fire-and-forget weapon. This, among other things, has provided it with the status of being the first product of the third-generation ATGM. For greater ease of use, the system offers two different options for the operator, a head-on collision with a target or at a low altitude above it. The latter significantly increases damage when fired at armored vehicles. Throughout its existence, the Javelin has already experienced more than one modification, now having designations ranging from A to D. Thus, the FGM-148D modification is intended for export and has some differences from the main version of the missile system. The latest member in the anti-tank system has been presented as part of the modernization program, Spiral. During the first stage, the designers solved the issues of the system's non-economic and physically obsolete nature, the reduction of its weight, and the transition from analog to digital signal processing. As a result, the size of the integrated computer was reduced from two to one circuit board, and the life of the Javelin was extended via updates out to the 2050s. The heart of Spiral 2 was the FGM-148F modification, and the engineers focused entirely on the development of multi-purpose warheads that could be used to strike other existing types of targets. Due to technical difficulties with the precursor warhead, development was delayed, and in 2016, reports were made concerning a system test freeze. Then, in March of 2017, these were resumed and the first batch of missiles for the FGM-148F was manufactured in May 2020. The FGM-148F missiles feature an advanced warhead that includes a next-generation charge designed to penetrate even tougher armor, as well as a fragmented steel body to improve the effectiveness of defeating personnel and lightly armored targets. Additionally, the new modification has less weight and boasts an improved targeting and tracking system. The primary goal for the third phase of the Spiral program is to create the latest FGM-148G. Instead of a cooled, long-wavelength IR sensor, this system will receive a modern commercial sensor that requires no cooling. Thanks to this, not only will the weight of the rocket be reduced, but also its overall cost. It's expected that the new sensor will significantly increase the effective range of the ATGM, potentially up to 11,500 feet or 3,500 meters. The Javelin was used by the U.S. Army, U.S. Marine Corps, and Australian Special Forces during the 2003 invasion of Iraq demonstrating excellent performance against the Type 69 and Lion of Babylon tanks. During the battle for Debeka Pass, a platoon of U.S. Special Forces personnel armed with javelins destroyed several T-55 tanks, eight armored personnel carriers, and four enemy trucks. According to military analysts, military personnel while at Debeka Pass managed to hit their targets with 14 out of the 19 missiles they fired. The manufacturers themselves reported a hit rate of 94%, 
based on the fact that 31 out of 32 missiles fired hit their targets during testing. During the war in Afghanistan, ATGMs were also used in counterinsurgency or coin operations. Initially, it was considered impractical due to its destructive power, but after additional artillery training, the soldiers learned to make accurate shots at enemy positions with little collateral damage. ATGMs also performed well during the Syrian Civil War. But the main, and perhaps the most iconic use of these weapons was after the Russian invasion of Ukraine in the beginning of 2022. NATO and the United States provided Ukrainians with thousands of javelins, and the effectiveness of their use by Ukrainian armed forces astounded even Pentagon experts. After all, 100 out of 112 shots fired by the Ukrainian army hit the target, which has since become an absolute record for the history of this anti-tank system's employment. Russian tanks were so frightened by the javelin that they decided to use a very homemade method of protection against missiles by installing bars on their turrets. Even though some armored vehicles were spotted carrying such protection even back in 2016. However, as practice has shown, neither the T-72 nor even the main trump card up Russia's sleeve, its T-90, can withstand the onslaught of these holy shells. Speaking of holy, against the backdrop of the fierce resistance put up by the Ukrainians on their own land and the grinding of the Russian so-called military might, the country now has a new defender, Saint Javelin. For those who are believers, Mary Magdalene is an icon of redemption, the embodiment of the concept that there is always hope for a second chance. For Ukrainians, her reimagined image with a javelin in her hands has become one of the main symbols of resistance, along with the Russian warship that was told to go to hell by the brave sailors of Serpent Island. Unfortunately, the fighting continues, with thousands of civilian deaths already in its wake. But while the brave warriors of the armed forces of Ukraine protect heaven and earth from the Russian takeover and destroy enemy equipment with javelins, we still do not lose hope that tomorrow there will be a peaceful sky over Ukraine and not another threat, be it cruise missiles or anything else. How soon do you think the javelin will help destroy the remaining Russian armored vehicles over in Ukraine? Also, let us know in the comments which of this ATGM's features impressed you the most. And as always, if you found this video enjoyable, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like today's. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next video.